Welcome to the Dropship Podcast, where you'll learn how to build and grow a high-ticket dropshipping business and hear stories from successful e-commerce entrepreneurs. Let's kick this thing off. Hey, welcome to the Dropship Podcast. And today we want to talk about Google Ads. I think we get a question about Performance Max, PMAX, and we can go into what that is probably once a week. And I think it's time we just put it to bed. And anytime we get this question, we can just send them this podcast. Performance Max is not the answer. Take it away, Joe. I actually got this question the other day in Facebook Messenger. You didn't know that. I actually did from somebody who I think is actually in our course. Hmm. Um, was asking, do you still do the campaigns the way that you've always done? Always, almost always done them. The three tier shopping campaigns. We talked about this on the podcast before and we'll mention it again here. You know, is it, is it time to run Performance Max? You know, Performance Max ads are Google's kind of automated. It's not even just a shopping thing anymore. It's like a, everything. It does shopping. It does search text ads. It does display. YouTube. It does YouTube. It shows uh, Gmail. You know, it shows all over the, basically the Google interface, all of Google's kind of interfaces. And um, basically lets Google do everything. doesn't let you have much control over search traffic, search terms, bidding, anything. It just shows up everywhere. And it overrides everything else you're doing, right? Um, and it's all very automated, which is what Google's trying to, let's be fair, push people towards. And, you know, I can kind of get where they're coming from with that. But at the same time, uh, the problem with it is, is that Google doesn't understand your business. Um, you know, high ticket dropshipping, you're running a really specific business model, right? Um, you've got sp specific things you're trying to hit. You've got, you know, a particular margin that you're selling your product at. And, you know, at, at this point in time, it's just not, I think because Google's algorithms can't take that into account and because Performance Max gives you no ability to tell Google, these are the type of search terms I want. Like you have no ability to say to them, hey, you're getting it wrong. I'd, I'd like you to swing more in this direction or something like that. Um, I just really haven't seen any evidence that it works for high ticket dropshipping businesses. I've certainly seen it work in other types of e-commerce businesses, which primarily for me, at least in my experience, like lower ticket direct to consumer type products. Um, I have seen it work reasonably well in those sort of businesses, but yeah, high ticket dropshipping. I've heard quite a few people say that they were trying it and it just didn't work. It was the cost per sale was way too high for them to be profitable. Um, and uh, they had agencies doing it for them and all of this sort of thing. And yeah, so at this point in time, it's not the answer. I'd kind of like it to be the answer though, right? You know, I mean, Helpful. it'd be cool. Uh, I tried it too. I think there's an old episode where I, I gave it a shot on one of my businesses on a term that lots of volume out there. We'll just say that, right? Uh, and I didn't even get a single sale. I spent $1,000. I think, look, I think we should break it down, right? So let's break down what Performance Max does and let's break down what our funnel does and why it's different. So Performance Max, again, it's going to show up on every single channel. You need to feed it lots of creative for it to even work. So it needs lots of images. It needs lots of headlines. It needs a lot of information that maybe you can provide, maybe you can't. Likely when you're running a high ticket dropshipping business, you haven't built all of this creative, where if you're running a direct to consumer business, you definitely have, you've, you've had to create this creative. So they're just showing you for everything, likely showing you for your brand name a lot, unless you get a Google rep to pull you out for your brand name. Cause you know, it's great to show up for your brand name. Don't get me wrong, but that's how agencies skew your data. They run on your brand name and they squeeze the sponge as my friend Taylor Holiday would say, and just grab you those sales so their numbers look good. Whereas you want to you want to find new customers, not people who have already found you and are coming back. Now, don't get me wrong. You want to get the people coming back too, but you want new customers. They're also running on very high volume generic terms most of the time. And so the idea that you're going to sell a $5,000 Memphis pellet grill, a top of the line pellet grill on the term pellet grill is just not realistic. Uh, you're never going to get that one-to-one -one ROAS. Maybe you'll get that traffic. And maybe you have all the pieces in place to educate that customer and take them on their customer journey. Hopefully you get to that point in your business, but in the beginning, you just won't. And so it's, it's, uh, it's hard to imagine somebody early in their journey ever making Performance Max. And even later in your journey, you just need so much in place to make that profitable. Whereas what we teach is to choose the keywords you want to show up for. So a person searching pellet grill has very different intent than somebody searching Memphis elite built in pellet grill. Like they're, they're looking for a very specific product. I would rather show up for that 
than I would show up for Pellet Grill. And certainly I want to pay more for that than I want to pay for Pellet Grill. And so while I like the idea of Performance Max covering a lot more basis, they're showing up on YouTube and more on the display network, more on text ads, and certainly they know who the customer is. They're following that customer around, right? Google knows everything about you, whether you want them to or not. I want the ability to show up when somebody's towards that bottom of the funnel and help them assist them on the rest of their journey, help them in the retail process, which is what we are. We're retailers rather than, you know, I hate the term dropshippers. We're retailers, right? And so can we take somebody at the bottom part of their journey? And then hopefully as our business matures, we can expand through SEO, through text ads, to grabbing people a little further up the funnel and a little further. But the idea that you're going to flip on Performance Max, sell an air purifier on the term air purifier at a high ticket price that we need to sell at right a thousand plus it's not going to happen it's going to be very difficult for it to happen so one other point that i would point out is like think through margins so when you're running a direct-to-consumer company you likely are shooting for a two row as like a two row as is really good for you know smaller dollar item direct-to-consumer things so if you don't know what row as that's return on ad spend so if i spend 50 bucks on ads i made 100 dollars in sales and if i sell a product that's whatever 20 bucks, 30 bucks. Well, let's say it's 20. So I made five sales for that hundred. In that hundred, I probably have 80% margin, 75% margins on that product. So I'm actually profitable, if not close to probably break even at a two row as. Now in high ticket dropshipping, if you have, first off, if you have 70% or 80% margins in high ticket dropshipping and you're making sales, I want to give you a big hug. That would be amazing. It's not happening, right? You are a retailer. And so the brand themselves, they might have 75%, 80% margins, and they're giving you a smaller portion of those margins to be a retailer for their product, right? Usually brands like the Keystone. So if they make a product at 500, they'll retail it at 2000, sell it to you at 1000. Everybody gets a piece of the pie. You're probably going to have 20, 30, 40% margins in high ticket drop shipping. Certainly there's some uh, outside cases. Like I had 5% uh, selling pitching machines and had to work my way up, but 20, 30, 40 is the average. So in that case, you're going to need to shoot for like a 10x ROAS on your ad spend, which is definitely possible. Anyone who tells you it's not is silly. I can show you many examples where this is possible. But you're going to need a 10x, right? So you spent $100, you got $1,000 in sales. On that $1,000 sale, which is probably one sale, right? You spent $100 to get one sale. You maybe made $200 or $300 on that sale. And you need to ship it and pay your fees. At the end of the day, maybe you come out with the other 100 on that piece, if that makes sense. So you have to factor in the fact that we need to acquire a customer at not less dollar amount, but less total percentage amount, right? Your ROAS needs to be much higher. Your return on ad spend needs to be much higher than direct to consumer companies who can run that performance max, can run, let Google run ads on very generic terms and probably convert because they're impulse purchases most of the time. They're lower dollar purchases where again, we're not gonna sell a pellet grill on the term pellet grill. Hey, if you've been thinking about starting your high ticket dropshipping journey with us here at Dropship Breakthrough, but you've got questions, you're unsure about what's inside the course, you're unsure if it's right for you, or you just love to hear from the experience of, of our students, you can jump on a free call right now with a member of our team who is also a Dropship Breakthrough student and successful high ticket dropshipper to talk about all of those things. Just head to dropshipbreakthrough.com forward slash call and book your call today. Yep. Yep, absolutely. Um, and I, yeah, I just don't know why you wouldn't want control either. I mean, the other, the other problem for me as well is like, you know, those performance max campaigns, they're just going to do all of your retargeting as well. Hmm. And so you have, yes, you could probably give it the same sort of, um, like image or ad assets than if you were doing your retargeting yourself, but you can't, you're not, you've got no control over how Google's going to show that to people when it's going to show those things to people in what order. And so what you really want to do with your retargeting is create a customer journey based on how they got to your site in the first place and the products they've been looking at or the content they consumed or whatever it is. And you just can't do that with Performance Max. Um, and I, to me, I just don't see like from that perspective either because Performance Max is just going to override anything else you're running on the retargeting front as well. Um, and we've talked about on a recent um, episode or a fairly recent episode how important that was and how many touch points, you know, between one and 50 yeah. these days before somebody's going to purchase from you. And so that's, becoming, I think uh, it was always important, but maybe an even more important sort of element to your marketing is, is getting that right and doing that, you know, in a way that's unique to your business as well. And I just don't, can't see that happening 
anytime soon, to be honest, with with Performance Max campaigns. So I was at a e-commerce fuel live, and I, I don't remember if it was last year or the year before, and somebody was presenting on this, and they were showing why Performance Max was valuable to the direct to consumer people in the audience, and he made a point of saying you should actually double up on this. And so to what you said, if you run Performance Max and you run your own funnel that we teach, right? The high, medium, low priority funnel, Pmax will override it. It will take over everything and it will have priority over your own funnel. So what this guy did was, again, they, they don't have very many products. This is easier. They created their own feed and then they duplicated it. So they put in one feed of all their products, ran Pmax. They put in another feed of duplicated products. So the same product ID, dash one, and then they ran a funnel on that one. So they had some control while well, they let Pmax kind of do its thing, which I think is valuable when you're a smaller and a, a brand with bigger margins. And they also had control to go after those keywords because you're not getting any data from Performance Max. And so they're hoping it's doing good. The numbers look good, but they can also then control that on their own funnel. I think since then they've actually like not allowed you to kind of do the separate thing or it doesn't work quite the same. I haven't tested that yet on high ticket dropshipping. I'm, I'm actually tempted. I wonder on a flushed out store where you have email sequences everywhere, where you've downloadables everywhere, you have, where you have all the remarketing set up, where you have a real system built out. If filling that top of the sponge is, again, my friend Taylor Holiday calls it filling the sponge, right? Can you just pour a bunch of water into the top of that sponge and then use that bottom of the funnel traffic, the lower ticket SEO uh, or the, the longer tail SEO the emails, the remarketing to squeeze those those sales out of there, provide that value. I kind of want to test that strategy. And that's the only time I think I would test it is in a very established business. Just in the beginning, you don't have room for error. You 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 need to make sales. One, for your confidence. And two, just to, you know, you want to break even in the beginning. You want to make a few sales in the beginning and make a little bit of profit so that you're encouraged to keep going. And, and if you're sending top of that, top of the funnel, top of the sponge, if you will, pouring water in that sponge, it's just going to come right up the sides. Because you don't, you don't have anything in place to catch all those people who might come there on a pellet grill, be interested, but how are they ever going to find you again? Yeah. Yeah, I think, I mean, that would it would be interesting to test that for sure. And um, I think I would agree. The only place you can really test it, if somebody's listening and they're like, oh, I'm just started, I'm going to try that. Like the problem you have, and the only the reason why you would only test that on a more developed store is the problem you have with Pmax as well in a high ticket dropshipping business is just one of data. Hmm. Right, so not only does that algorithm rely very heavily on uh, user data, like the, the information, the 400,000 uh, data points Google apparently has on every single one of us, or they can track, it relies heavily on that behavioral based data, but it also relies very much on conversion data on your own website. Hmm. Like, uh, and that's how part of how those algorithms optimize is you have to have X amount of conversions in X time frame. Um, for it to know and recognize when a customer is, when, when a searcher is likely to turn into a customer. And without that, it can't optimize. And so the problem you have in a high ticket dropshipping business, particularly in the beginning is we just make fewer total sales. Yes, they're really expensive and that's the upside, right? This is one of the great things about high ticket dropshipping is you don't have to make a lot of sales individually to make a decent amount of money. The downside of that is, is you don't generate enough con much conversion data. Like, cause it's not looking at the, uh, the amount of the conversion. It's looking at how many individual conversion events are you triggering? And so for most high ticket dropshipping businesses, to be honest, even if you're doing mid six figures plus, you're probably still not triggering enough conversion events cause it's within a, a time frame window. You have to do it like 30 days or something like that. You're, you may still not be doing it enough for it to optimize and get your cost per sale down to the level it needs to be for you to live with it. Um, and so once again, I mean, I'd agree. I, I wouldn't try it. I definitely wouldn't be using it in, or trialing it in the way that you mentioned until you know you're actually going to be able to feed that algorithm with enough data so that it has a chance to work for you. Look, I want to believe. If you look back, <laughs> Enhanced CPC, I think was the first one mm. where it was like, we know what people are doing online. They know what websites you're visiting. Yeah. They know what YouTube videos you're watching. Google's watching you everywhere, right? A lot of places are watching you everywhere nowadays. <laughs> yeah. And so they have a lot of information on you. And I want to believe that they can say, hey, somebody searched this, landed on your site, went back to YouTube, watched a video on this, saw another video comparing the two things, watched a lifestyler. You know, again, we use pellet grills. They went to your site, they searched a brand. So they're halfway down the funnel. 
They landed on your site, maybe on a collection page. Maybe you're running a text ad to a collection page. They surf around, leave your site. Later that night, they go to, to YouTube and YouTube algorithm presents them with, uh, hey, this brand versus this brand, which you should definitely be creating, by the way. And they watch that and now they're even more convinced. And then they see a, 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 a barbecue channel cooking on that grill. And now they're even more convinced. And they go back to Google and they search a search term and your ability to layer a smart list or layer an audience of someone who's been to your site so you can show up in front of them fires. That's like, the, that was the beginning of this, right? And it's something we still do today. You should be doing this in your Google ads. I want to, I want to believe they can go a step further and they can see they went to your site and they watched all this stuff. And Google says the best odds of them making a conversion is sending them back to your site because they trust you already. And so Google's working in your favor and, and just pushing you to the top simply because they've been there before. That's likely going to lead to a conversion, which is going to make the advertiser happy, which is going to make the advertiser spend more. I want to believe like that's the goal of this whole thing. And, and maybe just maybe performance max works that way for people. I think it's slowly getting there. I think some of the things they're doing work really, really well. And in the past have worked with the smart list was one of my favorite things they've ever built. And I want to say performance max will someday be my new favorite thing they ever built or a variation of that, where they give you a little bit of control, but they also give you a little bit of what deep mind is doing in the background, their AI. And so I just don't, I've said this before. I don't think it's there yet. I think they are there in some ways and I think they're not there in others, but man, do I want to believe I'm a, I'm an optimist. I'm a futurist. I want to believe we're all going to this place where it is a little bit easier for Joe bag to start a business. And it might be the case that performance max is that for somebody with a $30 product that they, you know, get landed here for five bucks. I just, it, I don't think it's there for a $3,000 product that they get landed here for $500. Yeah. Where, where that comes in. And once again, I, I'm the same. I, I believe it's going to get there at some point, probably sooner than I think. Right. Probably. But where, where it gets there is when you can communicate with an AI, the AI in Google ads, right? So you can, you can, you know how you can go into chat GPT and basically train it mm. to produce something in the way you want it to be produced, right? You can feed it data and it will, based on that data, will give you back something. I think when we have a way that we can communicate with Google ads and say, this is my business. This is how it works. These are my margins. This is the cost per sale I need to hit. Uh, these are the sort of search terms I'm only interested in. Right. And I want to maximize those and minimize those. Give it that not just conversion data, which is just raw numbers with no context, but actually give it the context of your business and have it understand that and then kind of act like a, an ad manager. Like if you go and hire somebody as an ad manager and they're good, let's assume they're good because there's a lot of shit ones out there, right? They're going to go in and they're going to learn about your business and how it works and what your margins are on individual products and all that sort of thing. And then they're gonna go and manage your ads. So I think when Google ads can do that, Google's interface, Google's AIs, whatever can do that, then it's probably scary what it can do at that point in a good way. When did, yeah. So in a good way. I love that you went there. First off, John doesn't ever go into the future. He's always <laughs> an old man yelling at the cloud. So I'm happy that he brought this idea uh, to the table. That one. How do we get there? then not immediately have too much competition because everybody can give context, right? You'll win for a little bit and then the, you know, the floor will be raised. Yeah. Is the next step what I presented on at, at both live events? Is it the content to commerce stuff that we talked about? Which, by the way, we're going to put out on this feed at some point here uh, in the new year. I'll, I'll just do that presentation live. I'll do a little webinar. Is that it? Is that it? You need to have, not that Google will be dead. It will just be the playing field will be leveled because I think like right now, those who are not running this funnel that we teach, which again, we didn't invent this funnel, but those who are not running this funnel in high ticket dropshipping are not successful. There's no way they could be successful. You have to run this funnel in order to work in high ticket dropshipping. And so once that is to a place where everyone can do everything simply by providing an AI the context, you know, where will that next leap be? My brain's already going to like, where will the marketers find the edge then? Uh, look, I mean, I, I don't really think of Google Shopping at this point, 2023, as being a massive competitive advantage. Like getting, Lost. I mean, it, it, you've got to do it, but like, uh, you know, a lot of people are already in a competitive environment. And yes, definitely, if you were competing against a high ticket dropshipper that wasn't doing things the way we do things, you would probably be beating them. But you're not just competing against high ticket dropshippers ever. Like there's other people out there who are doing Google Shopping 
and they might have bigger, better margins than you, mm. right? So they might not even care how they spend money on, on ads. They might just be like, well, I'm just going to maximize it. And I'll, you know, if I break even, I break even. That's fantastic. Like what I'm trying to say is I don't think that if you're doing well with shopping traffic these days, I think it's less about how you're running your ads. I mean, yeah, performance max isn't the answer because it's way off, but people are buying from you actually probably more so because what you're doing on your site, because of the service that you're offering, because of what you're offering them and how closely that aligns to what they want to see. Right? I actually think, so sending traffic to a website is not that hard. I'm, I'm going to be frank. That's the easiest part of the whole high ticket dropshipping journey. I mean, some types of traffic take longer to generate SEO and all that sort of thing for sure. But I don't, think that's your hardest task you're ever going to have. Like any idiot can switch on ads, right? Maybe not any idiot can get them profitable. Most people will be able to get them to break even if the product actually sells, right? So I don't, I don't think that's where you should be looking as being your big advantage right now, let alone in the future. I mean, if that's what you're saying, my big advantage is how I run Google ads, you're about to get fucked up. I'll come in there and fuck you up because I can probably do it better than you. Mm. Or I've got deeper potter, pockets and I just don't care. There's businesses out there that pay for traffic at a loss. You're not competing with them unless you're prepared to do the same, right? So for me right now, your, your big advantage is not your ads. Yes, you need to do it. Yes, it's good to do. Yes, they work. Yes, that's how you should start your business because it's quick, gets you progress that you can't get in, with any other traffic source. But once again, if that's all you're thinking about, man, you're already losing. You're about to lose big um, because somebody's going to come in and just run a better business than you that serves the customer better than you. That's what you should be focusing on. And even if Google Shopping gets fully automated and it works fantastic, you're still going to have to serve a customer. Yeah, and stuff you talked about, content, commerce, all that sort of thing, which will be an upcoming episode on this podcast, I think at some point, that's going to be more important for sure because that, that's something that only you can do in the way that you do it. I can I can hear somebody listening to this who's like discouraged now, right? Oh, like, yeah, no, don't be discouraged. You okay. have to do this stuff. It has just become the floor. I, look, I often talk in baseball prospects, and I know no one knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> but when you're an upcoming pro, it, it takes like six years to get to the league, right? Five years to get to the league in baseball, four years, whatever. We like to dream on ceilings of oh. prospects of what they, they could come up and they could be the next Babe Ruth or the next Derek Jeter or whatever it is. But reality is like you're looking at that floor. That's what matters because the floor actually gets you there. This is the floor. You have to do Google Ads. That's the floor. If you don't do it right, you will not be successful. This is where you have to start. You have to do the floor. But thinking that's all you have to do is foolish. So you have to get this right. I encourage you to do it extremely well i think we teach it extremely well and there's even more coming into the course uh if it's not already in there by the time this comes out already just there's there's so much you can do in there but that's a must it's not a that's not your competitive advantage as you said your competitive advantage is like the other ways that you can give value nowadays and i think there's only more to come as we move into this new technological wave the greatest time to ever be a fucking human by the way i can't imagine living any any other time than like watching all this new stuff come and the moment that John, uh, you know, sits down for the day and puts his goggles on and sees my ad, the moment he puts them on, that sounds like a fun day to me. That's the stuff that, like, will eventually be your competitive advantage, not just getting this right. You just got to get this right. Nah, man, if anybody said to me, my business is great because of how I run ads or because I run ads, I would be thinking, looking at them thinking, you have a bad business. Like that, that's not a business. Traffic isn't a business. I mean, that's why one of the reasons low ticket dropshipping sucks because all those guys can do is, oh, I run Facebook ads. My whole business is built on running Facebook ads. Arbitrage. Yeah, it's shit. It's not a good business. That's not a good, it's not a lasting business because there is so much more to a business that makes it fantastic than just how you run ads. It's plain and simple though. Performance Max does not work for high ticket dropshipping. Cut that for a short guy. Thanks for listening to the Dropship Podcast. You can find all the show notes for this episode at dropshippodcast.com. And if you're ready to take the next step in your dropshipping journey, we invite you to join us inside Dropship Breakthrough, where John and I will walk you through step-by-step -step in starting your own high-ticket dropshipping e-commerce business. But that's not all. Dropship Breakthrough will also teach you everything you'll need to know to grow your business and take it to the next level. 
So head over to dropshipbreakthrough.com and sign up for our free training that will help you take the first steps towards building and growing your own profitable high-ticket dropshipping business.